How's it going? Welcome back to a very special, majestical video. Yes, that is a actual word. Trust me, I'm a doctor. So spread this video to all your friends, because it's a computer virus. Virus! Take it from me. I am a doctor. Doctor Toboggan. Anyway, welcome back to a very special video today. And I'm super excited. I spent way too long getting the lighting perfect for this video because I'm just so excited about this and I want this video to be perfect as much as it can be. So yes, we are finally taking a look at Dragon's Dogma 2. This is my Dragon's Dogma 2 review and we're gonna get into all of the details. I've done so much extensive research and today I'm very excited to be giving you this Dragon's Dogma 2 review and I really do hope you enjoy this video. Like we always do, we break it into positives and into negatives um, because of course gaming is a subjective experience just like anything and you might like some things about this game and you might not like other things. This game isn't going to be for everyone, but I think that's why Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to be a special video game because this isn't made for the masses. This isn't Marvel Spider-Man 2, okay? This is a dedicated game for fans of open world RPGs, immersive open world RPGs, mind you, okay? This isn't a casual game by any means, and I think a few people will be shocked by that because they might think, oh, this looks interesting, and they'll give it a try, but soon they will realize that this game actually requires a lot from you, the player, and it's an investment for sure, but what's in this game is so spectacular, and yeah, I'm excited to talk about it, so I do hope you enjoy this Dragon's Dogma 2 review, and of course it is an early review, so do bear that in mind. It's based on hands-on experience, of course, and the early gameplay, what I could experience, all of the information that I've gathered, content creators, media as well, and their hands-on experience, everything all combined. It's always important to look at the games early because, especially now with modern day gaming, you just never know what you're gonna get. It could just be a broken pile of shit on release because gaming has become so big nowadays, investors and big corporations like to basically squeeze out games like you squeeze out a dirty turd and just make as much profit from it as possible. What they show off most of the time is just marketing and that's how they make money in the modern day gaming world, okay? Live service games, microtransactions, we all know the deal, broken releases. Finally, it's getting better, last year was a banger, but Dragon's Dogma 2 is not like that, okay? The people behind this game actually care. They actually care about creating a game for the sake of being a good video game. It's not trying to be cinematic with its storytelling, it's not trying to replicate any movies, it's giving you an immersive world that you can get lost in, telling stories that only a video game can tell. Your stories. Hold fast to your strength of will, Arisen One. Those who can be of aid to you will reveal themselves in time. Thy will, thy soul, these are all the means thou hast to carve thy path anew. So before we get into this Dragon's Dogma 2 review, and before you check out the other Dragon's Dogma 2 reviews, I simply ask that you do consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean so, so much to me, you have no idea. If you like early looks at new games, if you like a retrospective, up-to-date reviews, you will find that on my channel as well, and philosophical videos. I blend all of these together, gaming and philosophy, and yeah, it would just be awesome to have you join. This community really does mean everything to me. What I'm trying to build here, I'm trying to create a movement as well, and bringing back old school YouTube. So please just support an independent creator instead of these massive corporations, companies, or massive influencers that are usually paid off, do consider supporting me by dropping a small donation so I can keep doing this, thanks, and just subscribing or checking out my music on Spotify. We're getting so close to 10k, and that would just mean everything, and, you know, this is a community effort. If you are one of the wise ones who have subscribed and you're watching this video, I just want to say thank you, and thank you to any new people joining us. 
So now let's get into his Dragon's Dogma 2 game review and discuss all the positives and the negatives, but pretty much it's all positives with this one, of course. But this game is already incredible because just out in the open world, you will discover that this game is pretty much a boss gauntlet, okay? And I mean that in the best possible way. You will encounter so many creatures and sub-bosses just out waiting for you dynamically in the open world, okay? This is not scripted, all of this stuff just happens, but I do feel that Dragon's Dogma 2 has great pacing as well from what I've seen so far with the early game. I can't speak for the whole experience, but you know, you don't get constantly ambushed by griffins or dragons or cyclopses or anything like that. It is nicely paced out, so you, there is downtime in between where you can just soak up the world or fight smaller mobs and stuff like that. But it is a boss conlet because you will be fighting so many giant enemies and each one takes a hefty amount of time to actually take down. But there's just so much more to this game than that. But that is the core experience of this game, the combat and fighting these giant creatures. But luckily the combat here is just off the wall, okay? This is like the best combat system I've played. So what other classes we have? We have the fighter, we have the mage, we have the thief, we have the archer. We have the advanced classes, the warrior, the sorcerer, and then we have the hybrid classes like the mystic spear hand and the mage archer as well. So there is so many classes to choose from, okay? These classes actually matter, okay? Unlike a lot of RPGs where you just choose a starting class and it's just to get the ball rolling. Even, you know, my favorite game ever made, Dark Souls, the classes in that don't matter as much because you can just, you know, kind of cater to your own later on. And of course you can do that in Dragon's Dogma too, and it encourages you, but you won't be an ubermensch, okay? You won't be the most powerful that you can be unless if you focus into a particular class. And that's what I really like here. The playstyle, the choices that actually matter, not just within the combat, but the classes, the consequences of quests, how organic the world is, all of that stuff I'm gonna get into. But the classes here are very important because each class has so much detail to it. In the beginning, it will feel stale. It will feel slightly boring, very limited movesets. But as you get into the class, if you get into the thief, if you get into the warrior, if you get into the mage, okay, it unlocks so much more. And these aren't bullshit, you know, progression paths like we get in most RPGs today. Okay, ooh. Oh, I've unlocked a magic runestone that gives me 2% increase that I don't even notice half the time. Or I gain slightly more experience if I choose this perk point. Dragon's Dogma 2 is not like that. When you level up, when you upgrade your, you know, class progression, you actually notice a difference because you will be unlocking new movesets. You will be unlocking new power stances, all of this stuff, new spells. And the animations make you truly feel like you are progressing as this you know, warrior, this powerful warrior, and I just love that. That's what games should be about. Instead of this bullshit stale mechanic with, you know, skill points, perk trees, actually give us new abilities, give us, you know, things that we can actually notice when we're playing the game. And that's what Dragon's Dogma 2 does so well. So there's so much customization in the classes themselves, and I really need to highlight how crazy that is, and I think people will be lost because of the amount of replayability this game has. You know, Skyrim, you can say that that game is good, of course it was Bethesda's best, and there's a lot of replayability to it, but Dragon's Dogma 2 and the classes, they just blow it out of the water in comparison because of how much you can progress your character in different ways. You can stun whole mobs and bosses with the trickster or make them jump off a cliff and just commit suicide if you're feeling pretty sadistic. There's just so much to do here, so much customization with the classes. The next positive is the open world itself, okay? The open world in this game is refreshing to say the least, okay? It's refined, it's even better than something like Zelda Breath of the Wild, I would say, because this is the opposite of Ubisoft style approach. And I love it for that because I hate those types of open world experiences and I think many people are tired of that uh, very gamified feeling. This is a gluten-free, organic, vegan-friendly open world RPG. <laughs> and I mean that in the best possible way. There is no bullshit HUD 
cluttering the screen. You can strip it all if you want and truly get immersed in this game. And I'm going to talk about the immersion later because this game, that's very important because the immersion in this is very good. But similar to games like Elden Ring or Dark Souls, okay, there's not too much HUD and the world itself, the way it's designed is just so well done because it's not even, I would say it's better than Skyrim, okay? And Skyrim was good in the fact that if you see something off in the distance, oh, you know, I want to go explore that and I'll mark it on my map. But at the end of the day, it just becomes a massive quest log of all of these things that you've got to do instead of things that you want to do. But Dragon's Dogma 2 is the opposite because everything in this world happens organically. Like your pawns will call attention to things in the distance. They will, you know, even help you with quests if, you know, they've completed it in their own world, in their own universe beforehand. And it's all organic. Where Starfield tried but failed to, you know, have that organic feeling where you're walking through a town and you're hearing people talk about something and that's how you pick up a quest so there is no map markers, Dragon's Dogma 2 succeeds in that idea where you do just seamlessly walk into a town, into a village with no loading screens, by the way, Todd. Yes, I know, crazy stuff. And, you know, these NPCs will just come up to you naturally and it all feels organic, it all feels realized and like an actual immersive world that you're living in and then that's how you get these quests and some of them are even time you know pressured which makes fucking sense because funny enough if someone's being kidnapped by a goddamn ogre and is about to get you know probed up the rectum you can't wait around for ages um before deciding actually now i'm gonna go save this little kid even though it's been like five years in game time it just doesn't make sense but here all of it actually matters all of it is realized which is insane to me um so i'm just so passionate about a game actually fulfilling on its promises on a game that is you know leaning into the fact that this is a video game and these stories can only be told in this format so you do just walk into towns and npcs will come up to you or you will hear them talk about something that's how you get quests you will basically discover locations when you're out in the world and you go to that location and just see what it's about or you will get prompted by your your companions who will tell you okay this is something that we can go and do or they might even have information about the world that you don't depending if they've already explored that area and stuff like that the ai in this game is far better okay but that does lead me to a small negative okay the pawns still do feel almost at times like an ai generated you know um companion and obviously that's what they are but I mean in the way they deliver their lines, in the way that it's difficult to form any type of attachment to them. Um, and that's the only thing that really draws you out of the immersive world. Um, because they just feel like, you know, really dumb NPCs in how they act. But their systems, the actual AI system here has been upgraded a lot. And the same with the enemies, how they attack you. They don't just wait around. They actually have tactics and formations. You know, little mobs will actually surround you or bosses will actually push you to the side of the cliff and stuff like that, depending on what the enemy you're facing. But the pawns, your companions, sadly, that still does feel like they just don't have a soul. And I know it kind of fits into the lore to a degree, but still, it would have been interesting to have just a few set characters um, that you can travel with as well. So basically now, quests actually have consequences, um, which is pretty insane. Uh, not all quests. By the way, I did make a Dragon's Dogma 1 retrospective, so go check it out after this video if you want. I would recommend it. A lot of them will actually have different outcomes and it's very subtle, okay? It's not like make decision A now, make decision B and go down this road. No, it's very subtle in how you, you know, fulfill these quests and only some of them will have that. But it is pretty cool now that we actually get different options, you know, if we want to make extra money or if you want to do something that's a little bit naughty or evil, you can actually do that, which is pretty nice. And like I said, a lot of them now even have time pressure to them, like rescue missions or, you know, clearing out a camp and stuff like that. And that just adds to the immersive factor of this game. And it's also important to note that Dragon's Dogma 2 only has one save file. 
and a lot of people will find that annoying but basically the developers basically talked about this themselves and they said it's to stop save scumming. The developers truly care about making an immersive world. They talk about creating a fantasy world that feels real like what would it actually be like living in a fantasy world you know like when it comes to the cooking and the detail in the animations and the crafting setting up your tent and you know things will change organically overnight going into these little towns and interacting with NPCs the fact that you can't just load a pre-save makes all of the decisions that you make in the game actually have weight and consequence and then it's the same with the quests if you fail a quest if you know you run out of time but at times it can be overwhelming and at times it can be frustrating especially as there's no fast travel and it does take a long time everything does feel like a slow slow journey so don't go into this expecting a quick release of dopamine this is definitely a grind this is a very slice of life experience at times because it is very very slow and the world is massive and i've only managed to see a tiny part of it so the world is massive and it takes a lot of time to get from point A to point B. You can take carriages or you can just walk there, but it takes a long time. And all of this is seamless, so it's very immersive. Like you just, from the countryside, you go into a massive settlement, a massive castle with no loading screen. But at the same time, if you just need to get back into town, to get some supplies or to, you know, finish your quest or something like that, it can be annoying but that adds to the pressure. This game is difficult, okay? Because you, when you are out in the wild, anything can happen and you do actually lose a portion of your health until you can fully rest. So it is very Souls-like in that way and it does have difficulty to it. And you can't just wander in to like a massive dungeon and clear out a cave without preparing first. So all of it, it all feels deliberate and that's what I really love, but it can be a little bit of a slog at times so you need to understand that going into Dragon's Dogma 2. Okay so the next positive like I said most of it is positive because I think this has the potential to be game of the year but this is pretty insane okay and that is the fluidity of the combat. So like I said you unlock different movesets as you progress with your class but the animations here are just so awesome and it's not just you know, you watching something happen, you are doing these actions. It's not like playing, you know, a cinematic God of War game or anything like that, you know, like a big Sony release or something. Nothing wrong with that, but this is a game and it's gameplay first. So when you're performing these new movesets, you actually have to do them, but they all look awesome, okay? The animation, the detail here is so awesome. You're just jumping around. If you're playing as an archer, you do truly feel like Legolas. So a few tiny nitpicks of negatives I have to give Dragon's Dogma 2 just out of, you know, playing Devil's Advocate and obviously no game is perfect. So the FPS here um, is not great and you will experience lots of dips depending on location unless if you have a super beefy PC and you're very rich and you can afford the highest of the highest, this game still feels like it's a little bit undercooked when it comes to performance. But this truly does feel like a next gen experience because it is completely seamless. Finally, we're getting a next gen game, but you know, it's not going to be perfect because the visual fidelity here is much higher and there's just so much more going on. Um, so that is annoying. And the next small negative, as much as I love the art style, this is a super high fantasy world, but they opted for more of a rustic kind of medieval tone, um, similar to The Witcher. And that does help in immersion because it makes this world feel even more alive. A very interesting idea, you know, a Japanese approach to kind of a Western fantasy world I just wish they lent into that more because I like the rustic design, but I feel like they could have just made it a little bit more fantastical, like with the color palette. So now the big thing that we must talk about is immersion, okay? This game is so goddamn immersive. Night and day actually matter. The night is actually dark. You actually need to have proper rest and you can't just you know, journey for days without, you know, preparing for the long journey ahead, preparing with food. How close are you to the nearest settlement? All of that kind of stuff really does matter in Dragon's Dogma 2. 
no fast traveling. The physics of the world itself, the enemies and the physics of objects around you, all of that matters and it makes this game feel truly immersive. So the final positive of this Dragon's Dogma 2 review, I would say, is the fact that this has basically doubled down on its inspiration from Shadow of Colossus, okay? Now some of the enemies are literally giant, absolutely giant monsters, you know, bigger than anything in Shadow of the Colossus even, and the climbing mechanics have been refined. Now enemies will actually have, you know, little points where you can regain stamina. Um, you can literally fly across the map just holding onto a griffin, for example, and it's just so awesome. You know, there's just so much going on in this game, and I think that's why many people, you know, big RPG open world fans of, you know, immersive open worlds, not casual open worlds, will really enjoy Dragon's Dogma 2, but that has been refined and it's important to mention. Now you can interact with the environment, you know, like push big enemies off of cliffs. If there's a giant rock, you can push it down to squash smaller enemies, stuff like that, which make it feel much more, you know, like you're interacting with the world. You can even blow apart, I think you've seen that before in the trailers and stuff, you know, a dam to basically wash away an enemy. You can do some crazy stuff and the same thing with the elemental effects with your magic, you know, like using fire and electricity, they actually react how you think they would react. Even though Dragon's Dogma is never been truly about the story, the lore, it does have deep lore to it and surprisingly for people who do know if they've completed the first game, the ending and the different choices and stuff like that, they are surprisingly detailed and they even have some philosophical aspects to them. The purpose of duty and rebirth and the whole concept of, you know, Dragon's Dogma and the Arisen and different universes of the Arisen, stuff like that. This game does have a lot to offer if you want to dig deep into that, but it can just also be a fun, make your own adventure type experience. So it's got the best of both worlds in my opinion. So that is my review of Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm so, so excited for this game. I think this truly is the best, one of the best next gen games that we've got. Um, and this is going to be a massive, massive success. And finally, people will recognize that Dragon's Dogma was always good, but this just blows it out of the water. And finally, I think we've got a Skyrim killer on our hands. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. I talked about everything that I could, and I really do hope that you enjoyed it. I really would appreciate if you liked the video, shared it around, help this video grow, because the YouTube robots will probably censor this video at some point, and that's just how it works for independent creators. So I appreciate what you do, any support that you can do, and yeah, I just put as much effort and passion into this video as I could, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day, peace out.